Hello all of you, Risk Tech is a Truth Seekers to podcast live the Battlefield. Today I'd like to share with you knowledge, experience and information about terrorism, about some different type of war. The war no many countries like to identify. It's called the eco war. And today we're going to talk about navigating the storm of radical environmentalism. Amidst the rapid rise of industry and worsening environmental damage, the second half of the 20th century, we all saw the emergence of a strong protest that continues exploitation of the earth. This uproar solidified into a movement that has since crossed a delicate boundary between activism and what has been controversially referred as a eco-terrorism. I want you to understand, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Not many countries want to say eco-terrorism, but it is, it's a reality. With the increasing awareness of environmental issues, the advocacy groups for protection of the earth become more radical, resulting in multifaceted discussions on the need, morality, and the consequences of their actions. And their actions actually influencing your life on a daily basis because we need to drink and we need to eat. And those groups will do anything and everything to bring to their attention you, me, and everybody else how they taking care of our planet Earth, but on different way, using different models of branding, terrorist methods. Today, I want to welcome you all to the podcast Life the Battlefield. For those who don't know me, my name is Mario Bekesh. I'm the Guinness World Record holder for the longest audio broadcast, 55 plus hours. As well, I spent 1,800 consecutive combat days in the war, and my professional career led me from being combatant in the war in special forces to being investigator in military security intelligence units, and then later on in diplomatic. I investigated, I interrogated, I questioned big traitors, organized crime figures, as well the people who spied on my country. So that's about me. So thank you for coming today and listening today. Something about you don't hear every day. And not many podcasters will actually work on that topic because it doesn't give them the views and understanding. But because I was in that field for so long time, I can understand how the industrial espionage works hand to hand with radical environmentalism groups, with the eco terrorists, and list goes on. Needless to say that they are not so old, actually. And they started in the 20th century. So let's go start with the origin of radical environmentalism. In the 1960s, there was a significant period for the development of environmental awareness, leading to many social movements, you know, stop the war in Vietnam, but as well, movements that sought to stop harmful impact on of human activities on the natural world. That means everything surrounding us, flora and fauna. Originally based on non-violent demonstrations and legal activism, these movements progressively adopted more assertive tactics aimed at directly challenging and limiting environmental plunder. Needless to say that implementations of these measures faced opposition from governments, corporations and anti-environmentalist groups who portrayed environmental activism as a kind of radical extremism. I want to talk about two particular groups. Maybe you heard of them, maybe not. One is called ALF, it's Animal Liberation Front. And second one is called the Earth Liberation Front. The Animal Liberation Front and the Earth, ELF, are two of the most notable, most notable radical groups in the eco-radical movement. What they did, they gained attention through a series of high-profile attacks. Believe it or not, we don't see this on TV. You don't hear this on TV. What we seeing on TV, it's mostly uh, they they pouring the soup on uh, in museum with the most of the pictures and most of the artifacts are anyway the copies because nobody in museum will put Mona Lisa original. You know, so some protester comes and put the tomato soup on top of the to, top of the image. Now we're talking about as well about people who are glue themselves for the asphalt. You know what I mean? Look at the profile of these people who are those people and how they can be easily manipulated. As I say, 
In 2005, the FBI identified those two groups as a primary domestic terrorism threat. Absolutely. So FBI, they identified them. Their activities have ignited a heated discussion regarding the nature of their actions and validity of their cause. Let's go talk in-depth examination of these eco-actions. ILF or Animal Liberation Front is established in 1970, sort of, when I was born, has played a crucial role in planning and carrying out the operations to free animals from what they regard as an act of cruelty and exploitation in laboratories and farms. On the other hand, we have the ELF, Earth Liberation Front, which emerged in the 1990s, focuses on buildings, corporations, and facilities that is considered environmentally harmful. What they're using, they use the fire and sabotage to interrupt operations and attract attention to its cause. Do you agree with me? Do you understand now, when you see there's somebody who says, I'm here on behalf of the animals or behind the planet Earth, and they're using the sabotage, for those who don't know, sabotage comes from the word sabot, which is a wooden shoe the French people put it on a railway to stop the uh, stop the trains. So that mean you're using the like a sort of asymmetric warfare, uh, a less expensive means to stop the bigger means. You know what I mean? The wooden shoe against the train. On those days in 1800s was. I think it was working. Today, they, what they're doing is asymmetric warfare. It is somebody using the, you know, the, the, the Kalashnikov with 30 bullets and, you know, run into the building to shoot on everybody. So that's what it is. But they're using those methods, fire and sabotage, to interrupt the operations and attract attention to its cause. That's what they're doing. Is the green scare an instance, fear mongering or legitimate concern that's what the fbi asks themselves is a fear mongering or legitimate concern the term green scare is comparison to the red scare during the cold war you know the russians coming doo -doo 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 -doo, implying a government driven effort to create fear stigmatize and repress environmental campaigners through monitoring and laws this technique purposely seeks to marginalized extremists, environmentalists, and other ideologies, portraying them as a menace to the security of the nation and the well-being of the population. You know, when I told you at the beginning how easily it is to manipulate those things, for those who don't know, there is, uh, I'm gonna put in the comment section below, um, I done the video about Jackal, Carlos Ramirez. And um, he was a very, very great tool in, in the hands of the many countries. You know, he was executing all people across the globe. And uh, he's been paid by many because he's been manipulated. Now, when you see that those two groups, ILF and ELF, they both can be easily manipulated because using the methods as the most of terrorists you know, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and you know, to name a few, they're using the same methods to disrupt, stop, and destroy. Critics contend that this has been enabled that gradual decline of fundamental rights and the freedoms under the pretense of counterterrorism. So, America says like, well, yeah, they are terrorists, but you know, other people complain that this is like, a, this is a pretense of counterterrorism laws. Now, ask yourself, what's the global perspective? The global perspective, a categorization of radical environmental group exhibit substantial variation. As at the beginning, not every country will call the eco-terrorists eco-terrorists. Contrary to US, European nations and Australia take more sophisticated approach and refrain themselves from using the phrase eco-terrorism. European countries, in hindsight, such as Germany and Netherlands, place less emphasis on categorizing environmental advocacy as radicalism. The Dutch, well, they transitioned their language from referring to animal rights activism to using the term animal rights extremism while avoiding the label of terrorism. So using the hard words, but still they don't want to label. The United Kingdom avoids using the phrase eco-terrorism and instead categorizes such actions as domestic extremism. Why is that? Australia and other regions are now examining the notion of single issue terrorism. What that means? That means that's acknowledging the distinct motivations and tactics of environmental activists without conducting significant research or categorizing them as a terrorist. Guys, ask yourself a question. Somebody who's tried to use a sabotage to stop you working, it, it is a terrorist because it can cost you life. Now, what's the prospect of ecological extremism? What is the prospect of ecological extremism? That's a good question. Despite the controversy and resistance, 
the cause of radical environmental organizations indicates a lack of decrease in the actions. Conversely, as the global environmental concern become more severe, these groups are increasingly determined to broaden their objective and strategies. So imagine you have the terrorist group, which guides, you know, that their members, whatever they are, they go and uh, watching on um, social media or on TV, it's like climate change, everything's going to be flooded, you know, everything's going everything's to die because of the weather, temperature, everything else. What do you think what they're going to do? We need to do something. We need to do something right now. Something was going to cause the losses of life of people innocent bystanders. Now, over the two past decades, there has been expansion in the range of day objectives, indicating a consistent and possibly increasing resolve to address environmental exploitation. So when you're watching news next time, ask yourself, when something happened, was that only civilians somewhere or there's uh, some people who are the big business people or people who like allegedly influencing global climate change? Now, we need to understand what is coming with this. It's called the Green Divide. The distinction between environmental activism and eco-terrorism becomes indistinct due to differing perspectives, ideologies and methodologies. In, in respect, the ILF and ELF consider radical groups saw their operations as essential interventions, essential to address uncontrolled environmental deterioration. However, their categorization as a terrorist highlights the wider societal and governmental dilemma of reconciling security priorities with the right to engage in peaceful protests. But when they glue themselves for the asphalt, you think, well, these people just doing the, themselves harm. Think one more time before you start saying anything. Every time, when you see somebody does like this, let's go glue ourselves for the asphalt. Let's go destroy the all milk in the shops. Let's go do all these things. How far away these people will go, are they going as well, which gonna make it your life insecure, your loved ones, the damage is being done by the couple of people. But that's just a part of the story. What the most of the intelligence organizations are afraid, the groups like this, which even they are not labeled publicly as eco-terrorists, they are easily manipulated. Given the escalating environmental dangers that globe is confronting, the discussion surrounding eco-radicalism encourages a thorough evaluation of the methods employed by civilization to safeguard its natural legacy. There's a trajectory of radical environmentalism. It's characterized by continuous and discord highlights the intricate connection between my, mankind, absolutely, and its environment and at the extent to which individuals are prepared to protect it. This is a big disconnection. What they think about something and what they're gonna do about something. So as I said, like, be careful guys next time when you are somewhere watching TV, you hear it, there's a group of environmentalists stopping the trucks, they try to, you know, in the 80s, maybe 90s, they try to stop all this nuclear weapon traveling, everything else. How dangerous that can be and how easily those groups can be manipulated. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think are the eco-terrorism, eco-radicalists or eco-members of the some green divide groups are a dangerous for society or not? Thank you for watching Life the Battlefield. Feel free to subscribe, share, like, comment. Let's go learn from each other much more. My name is Mario Bekesh and thank you for watching today.